Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In game, we call the gain effect added to a player buff, and debuff for those that cause negative impact. But in the editor, both the gain effect and the debuff effect are realized by the buff component. So, how to create a buff in the editor? Enter the editor, click the buff in the game component, you can find the button create buff. Click the create buff button, enter the name of the buff, in the new buff template and click confirm. A buff is then successfully created. If you want to create another buff, you can click the new button below the buff management list. Click on the created buff, and go to the property view on the right side of the editor. Let's take a look at the movement properties. The entity movement speed of the entity means that, when the entity obtains the buff, the value set by this property, will cause the speed of the entity to be accelerated or decelerated. For example, if we set the entity movement speed to 2, when the entity gets the buff, the movement speed is increased from the default 4 to 6. However, if the entity movement speed is set to minus 2, when the entity gets the buff, the movement speed is reduced from the default 4 to 2. For the entity movement speed magnification property, the editor's default entity movement speed magnification is 1. If the entity movement speed magnification is set to 2, then the entity will get the acceleration effect of 3 times the movement speed. However, if the entity movement speed magnification is set to minus 0.5, it will make the entity gain a deceleration effect of 0.5 times the movement speed. As for the entity leaping speed property, it acts on the leaping height of the entity. If the value set by this property is greater than 0, the entity will leap higher. If the set value is less than 0, the entity will have its leaping height reduced or even unable to jump. Then let's look at the physical properties of the buff. Here we mainly focus on the anti-gravity property, which is to add a gravity property in the opposite direction to the entity. For example, if we set the anti-gravity property to 2 and add the buff to an item. When the entity gets this buff through props, the entity will fly to the sky, because the anti-gravity, the entity experiences is greater than the gravity. Then let's look at the basic properties of the buff. Save buff property will record the buff on the player. If this property is checked, the buff will still exist on the character, when the player enters the game for the second time. Note that this property needs to be used in conjunction, with the data save property in the game settings to take effect. There are four ways available, set the buff time overlay rules property, namely independent calculation time, overlay time, reset time and biggest time. Note that this time stacking rule is for the case, where the same buff is obtained multiple times by the entity. Independent calculation time means that, when an entity obtains a buff multiple times, the effect of the buff will be superimposed, but the duration of the buff will be calculated separately. For example, we add three parts to the scene. After the player touches each part, the same buff will be added to the player. The effect of the buff is to increase the player's movement speed by 1. After touching the three parts, the player's movement speed will increase by 3. However, because the buff time overlay rule is to calculate the time independently, the durations of the three buffs do not affect each other. Except for the buff time overlay rules of independent calculation time, the other three rules are modified for the duration of the buff and will not affect the effect of the buff. The overlay time means that when an entity obtains multiple buffs, the duration of these buffs will be stacked. The reset time will change the buff time to the duration of the new buff each time the entity gets the buff. Regarding biggest time, it compares the duration of the new buff obtained by the entity with the remaining duration of the old buff and selects the buff with the largest duration. For example, we add item A that lasts for 8 seconds and item B that lasts for 3 seconds. Both A item and B item will give the entity the same buff. 
After the entity uses item A for 2 seconds, it will then use item B. Since the duration of item B is less than the remaining time of item A, the duration of the buff on the entity will still maintain the remaining time of item A. Note that the difference between the reset time and biggest time is that the reset time will overwrite the duration of the new buff on the old buff and will not compare the durations of the two buffs. Next, let's look at the replace action property and action playing speed property. The replace action property means that when the entity obtains this buff, it will replace an original action with a new action. If we want to replace an action, we need to create an action replacement bar first. Click the new button on the right side of the action replacement to add an action replacement bar. Enter the name of the action to be replaced in action replaced and then enter the action to be replaced on the entity in action after replacement so that when the entity gets the buff, the original action will be replaced. The action playing speed property is used to adjust the playing speed of an action. Click the add button on the right to add an action speed adjustment bar where we can set the playback speed of an action. Enter the run action in the action name, then enter 2 in the playing speed so that when the entity gets this buff, the entity's running action will play at double speed. Among the battle properties of buff, let's take a look at some special properties that need extra attention. The first is the damage bonus coefficient. This property will multiply the attack damage of the entity carrying this buff. For example, if the attack power bonus coefficient is set to 2 here, after stacking with the entity's default attack power bonus coefficient of 1, the attack power bonus coefficient become 3, the entity's attack power will be tripled. The damage reduction coefficient property works to reduce the damage received by the entity. For example, if we set the damage reduction coefficient to 0.5, then when the entity receives this buff, the damage taken will be halved. The damage over time entity property will cause damage over time to the buffed entity. For example, if we set the value of the damage over time entity to 2, and the duration of the buff to 3 seconds, then when the entity gets the buff, the entity will receive 2 points of damage per second. The continuous recovery of HP property is just the opposite of the damage over time entity property. This property will cause the buffed entity to restore the set HP every second. You can have a try yourself. If the property the entity cannot be damaged is checked, when the entity gets the buff, it will not take any damage. Next let's make a buff with a gain effect and a debuff with a decrease effect. Let's make the debilitation buff first. Create a debilitation buff. Set the buff's movement speed to minus 2. Then click on the battle property, set the value in the damage over time entity to 2, so that a debilitation buff that slows down and deducts blood is completed. Then we make a healing buff with a gain effect. First create a healing buff. In the movement property we set the movement speed to 2 and the entity movement speed magnification to 1. Then click on the battle property and set the value to 2 in the continuous recovery of HP property. Thus, a healing buff that restores blood and provides acceleration is completed. Then place two parts in the scene so that entities can get buffs by touching the parts. Add the logic to attach the debilitation buff to the red part. Add the logic to attach the healing buff to the green part. Next, we can enter the run mode to check the effect. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.